I felt like Woody Marks and Dylan Johnson, State's two running backs, were the toughest guys in the stadium at the Egg Bowl and maybe were the best in the stadium. They combined for 26 carries, 149 yards rushing. They had the two longest rushing plays, respectively, in the ball game, and together averaged about six yards per carry. So super productive. The run game really worked. And those guys, they just they're banged up. They would leave, get shaken up, go right back in there, and continue to be more physical and faster and more aggressive than the guys they were playing against. I am in total awe of the toughness that those two guys displayed in this game. And there's another thing that's hidden within their performance. Here's what it looked like. On pass plays of 15 yards or more, you know, if you're looking at big plays, 15 yards or more in a pass game, State had six pass plays that go for 15 plus for 110 yards. Ole Miss had five that went for exactly 110 yards. So, I mean, this is the same. This is a wash here between one and the other in the pass game, both with explosive pass plays of 15 plus that add up to 110 yards. But the difference is here in the run game, and this is not something anybody expected to see. On running plays of 10 yards or more, look at the difference. They both had the same number. They both had four rushes that went for 10 yards or more, but states added up to 79. Ole Miss has added up to 49 yards. Their longest, Ole Miss's longest carry of the day was 17. Meanwhile, look over here at State, what they've got. You got four carries that went for over 10 yards that add up to 79. You had an 11, a 32, a 12, and a 24. Again, something nobody expected to see, and that is it's State with the explosive run plays, not Ole Miss in the ball game. I want to show you why. Here are those four rushing plays that combined for 79 yards. We got the coaches' film. I love it when I get a hold of the all 22 coaches' film, and I know you do too. Four plays, 79 yards, the four big 10 plus yard rushes for Mississippi State. Let's take a look. All right, the first one that we're going to look at, it's a third and 34. So, you know, the, the down and distance, a bit of a giveaway uh, here because they're just going to give it to you. Uh, obviously, kind of totally backed out here, you know, four deep across. They're giving you a big hole in the front, just inviting you to run it. That's what they want you to do. But this is what I'm going to show you. So you, you make those, what, 10 yards, 10 or 11, whatever you're credited with on this particular play, snapping it on the 11, you get it out to the 21, so I guess 10 yards. Here's the thing about it. You know, it's a what if deal. They jump out here and split the front intentionally saying, please run the ball here on third and 34. That's what we are inviting you to do. You do it, but you actually have a chance to score. Not score. You have a chance to convert it. Here's what I mean by that. If one block sustains and that's right here on the backside, then because of the way they played this, safety came down. You get picked up here by the backside guard. He's got a chance to actually pop this thing and then have a lead blocker over here to go convert this. And I know it's a what if, but it's really close. You make the 11 yards, but if that backside end doesn't close it down, he's going to pop it out of there. You need one block from a receiver and you actually convert it. Um, so let's take a look here. You can kind of see what they're doing. Again, third and 34. So they're going to jump the front over, split it to the field, just say, hey, go ahead and take it inside. But here's what I mean by it. So he sets it up this um, angle to begin with. So what happens is safety comes down on that angle and backside safety comes across. So you're blocked here. You're going to be picked up right here. And if this is a cutback that splits, you're going to have one block out here on a wide receiver. Um, and it's an, it's a foot race to get to the first down stick and good job by Nick Jones on the snap. It's just, if it sustains and it doesn't, he comes off of it. But right there, this is the only thing, this is the only guy because he's, you know, flowing. He's not trying to get upfield. He's trying to flow. He's the only one that keeps this from being a cutback and out the backside, and then you'd have one block and a foot race to the first down stick. And I'm telling you, uh, you just basically one guy that makes this an 11-yard play as opposed to a 50-yard play. 
32 yards on third and one at the Ole Miss uh, 34 yard line. And so we'll watch the play and then draw it up. What you're going to see is two by two, but State had a tight formation. It's zone run out the backside, outrun the safety with a block in the slot, and it's a big 30 plus yard run. Great run right there, and great speed from Woody Marks, a guy who's pretty banged up. So you're looking at it from behind the offensive line here. So look at it from the offense's perspective. A couple of things that you know jump out to me. I mean, they got a head up nose, and you got an outside technique here on defensive ends. You know, so giving you a wide look. They're not going to necessarily play it that way, but that's the way they're going to line it up. And what the way State blocks this is is kind of classic zone run, where as if you're reading the edge defender. In other words, this zone is going back this way, and that's the way the run's going to go depending on what this defender right here does. If he hangs out there, I'm going to give it. And, you know, typically if you're reading it, if he slams down inside, fast quarterback's going to pull it and run or RPO off of that. So it's blocked the same way. And here's that shifting just before the snap. You see him walk down. It doesn't change the edge for Will in terms of what he's looking at. But it does change it for your tackle guard and also your backside tackle knowing that this is going to be a zone run on that backside, so they have to change up their steps. So on the snap, look what's happening. First of all, Sharp was so good, SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. He was just an automatic right there. He's kind of hanging out, so it's definitely give the other way, even if it's a read. It may just be a straight run call. And you're, you know, comboed up. There's nobody to combo up to. And then here, comboing up. You really only have one linebacker in a box on this Third and one. So they put four on the front, but there's still only five in the box. And watch what happens. Because, you know, gaps here, look at this linebacker. He's stepping in a hole looking at him, and you've lost contain on the edge because you shifted before the snap. I'm automatically just slamming down inside, and Nick Jones is physical enough. He slams it right here, and now your linebacker cannot skate and get to the outside. He can't get there, and Woody Marks beats him to the edge, and now you're on the edge. Now, the only thing that can happen now, Safety's got to run him down. And if you'll go back and look, you know, he's coming from center field. So he's downfield, downfield, downfield. Now turn once he sees him out the gate. It's too late. He's out the gate. I can't run him down right now. And then the next thing that's got to happen right there at the point of attack is Scooby Ford's in the right place. It doesn't have to be a pancake. You just got to have the right leverage, be in the right spot, and get him to the edge. And now we're foot race, and Woody's a much faster player. It's just a heck of a run. And the other thing that's happening, too, is you had a one-on-one call on the outside. So ra Ra's running that guy off. He's not even blocking him. He's just running him out of the play, and you get to the side. You can really see that from uh, the wide angle on the coach's film right here, um, which you couldn't see earlier. So if you look backside, ra Ra's just going to run him off the field, right? So he turns, runs outside leverage, and never sees it coming his way. And then you see that secondary. So once this happens, and sure enough, the pre-snap shift did kind of help you with the call because you're able to bounce it. And I kind of feel like when you see that pre-snap shift and he gets on the inside leverage right there, right there. So he starts outside. And if you're a running back and you're thinking it's probably going to be combo up to the linebacker on third and one, we get inside leverage and the run goes here. But then they shift it. And now I'm sure it's a clue for Woody that here, and I got a chance to bounce and unless this guy completely comes over the top or he jumps outside on the snap. You step inside, see it. As soon as there's contact, now I'm gone to the outside. And center fielder really, he's just, you know, he's just going to get outrun. Slot guy's in the right place. Great run by Woody. All right, here's just one more look at it. Uh, this from the defense's perspective. You know, watch on the pre-snap shift. See him squeeze that thing? Look at how they jump all these gaps, right? So they start head up nose, outside ends, and then just before the snap, we're going to shift. We're going to be inside, and we're going to get over that, get the nose over an A gap. And, and I'm sure it's a game plan thing going, okay, back here. So the zone runs are going to be opposite back here. So what we're going to do is clog that up. We're going to put a body in the gap, a body in the gap. We're going to get inside on one. And then linebacker can play the other hole wherever it is, right? Trying to clog this thing up. So it's very intentional with a a scouting report deal. But to me, there's two things that really do 
show out or, or jump out, I should say here. And one is physical job by left tackle Nick Jones. All right, so watch him pop him. Boom. Knock him up off his feet. He's not getting through. He's not clogging it up. Pop him up. And at the same time, because of the action in the back, look at Woody step in there in that A-gap. All it is is one step, but it holds 36. It's like one step here. It's not straight outside. It's one step vertical, and it holds 36 right there for one second before I bounce. And now I'm gone. And he can't see me. And he's now gotten a chance, just a little of a delay, to get kind of hung up here on the edge, too, to have to run around it to get me. You know, it's you don't even call it instinctual. You practice this so much so you kind of know who moves what and how and how quickly and you need to move. And, you know, and is there a little hesitation that actually helps you? So out on the edge, you block it down. You got the edge right now. One little vertical, one little half step vertical right there. Boom. By Woody. Holds 36 in the middle. And now spring it to the outside and outrun the safety. That's a great block and a great run. All right, second and one on the uh, 35 of Ole Miss this time. And you're going to spring it out the backside right here. And similar, you know, run to the previous play going the other way this time. And I think they got a little issue with their pre-snap alignment defensively. And Dylan makes them play a big 12-yard run right here, five yards after contact, pushing a guy downfield. Uh, we'll look at a couple different angles, but you can kind of see the whole field on this angle. You got – you know, two by two, so four wide, single back. They've got a three-man front. <clears throat> they give you a coverage look with safeties in the middle, and then everybody's soft, right? So there's really not a lot of guys in the box to begin with, so you get a run call. But what happens is the back's on quarterback's left, and you have two linebacker personnel that both step down on this side, even though, you know, the run actually comes out this way. So you, you – I think what you have is there's someone other than zero that should be contained on this side is what it looks like. Either that or he's slow in getting down to the line of scrimmage because you do have a safety over the top. At any rate, they lose some contain here on the backside. Uh, first thing is Reese, the right tackle, in there because of injury to your starter. Block down on the edge, get him inside. Now he's blocked. He helps you by going that way. The other thing it helps you is it looks like this run is vertical to begin with, so it keeps everybody in place north-south before it bounces, and they can't get there. So it's good action to begin with. And then you're going to get a block right here in the slot by Rufus Harvey that gets him to the edge. And now you're on the edge. See that Rufus kind of down inside? The only edge player they have is lined up pre-snap um, eight yards off the ball because this end's going inside, and the run's coming this way. There's nobody climbing over the top. So you almost have the the, the edge on pre-snap alignment. Boom. Rufus in the right place, block him down inside, spring it. It's a good job here on the outside, too, to turn your butt inside and seal him off, and it puts him back one-on-one -on -one with a safety. And when you get this in the SEC, you're starting running back, and you're one-on-one -on -one with that safety, you got to do one of two things. You either make him miss totally – or just run over it. But one of those two things has to happen. And right here, contact is made at the 28. And he's not down until five yards later, down at the 23. So we'll look at a different angle here. This will be from behind with the, with the offense. You can kind of see the front. One is defense not really ready. They're slow getting lined up when State's snapping the ball. So defensive end on that side, whether he gets a wrong call or not, I don't know, but he jumps down inside an inside gap. I don't know if it's the right call just because, you know, maybe it is. Again, he's opposite the back. Normally these runs come out the backside. Maybe he's trying to, you know, clog up that gap. Problem is, and he's actually working against his own nose guard who lined up center here uh, over the center, and Sharp just blocks him down in the gap. So they clog that whole thing up. I got a feeling he's going the wrong way. But I don't know that. Then, again, if you look, you really have one and two defenders who, for whatever reason, are really preoccupied with a quarterback coming out the backside. You do have to be responsible for that, but not two. See them both go QB. So now you're down to one player that's a possibility off the edge, and he's the one getting blocked who lined up eight yards off the ball pre-snap. Um, 
This is what the air raid gives you, is guys off the ball and run lanes when you go to it. And then Dylan just physically run through that guy and make five yards after you put your helmet on him at the end of the run. Uh, this is behind the offense again. Let's look at it from behind the defense on the wide. You can kind of see what they see. Again, right here, you know, in, in terms of trying to figure out the call, you start with three over two. And in the backside, you're really just two over two, and the run goes that way. Uh, but this third is eight yards off the ball. You go inside here. There's no contain. He's the only one, and you go block him. So uh, hat on a hat. Safety helps you by running out of there. I'm not really sure where he's going. Uh, 21, that is. Not really sure what he's seeing, where he's going, but that helps you because he runs out of there, creates all that space, and then you tee him up. All right, last one is second and five in the fourth quarter, down on the 25-yard line going in. Almost a touchdown run. Spring it out the backside, out run to the edge, race to the pylon. Thought he got in, knocked it down. They don't give it to him, mark him down at the one. You know, you later fumble, but this is a huge run right here. Show you a couple of things, and then we'll look at different angles. Key here is State's got two backs, so you only got three receivers on the field, and that changes the front. So three down, but there are already kind of three around there and a fourth walking in there. So you got seven already who can get involved, and if he comes slamming down, there's really eight who can get involved, and they all do get involved. So eight guys get involved in the run, and you're blocking five with a sixth. So this is six on eight. So you got to figure, like, well, how does it work? And the first thing that happens is two guys get lost. Um, you get combo center right guard up to linebacker, combo left guard tackle up to linebacker. So if it all works right, right, then you you're – you're comboing up if guys come off blocks. The problem is they don't really come off block. And you get a block on the edge from Austin Williams right here. And what happens is both safeties that walk down get in that A-gap vertically and start to squeeze through. One squeezes through, the other one gets caught up. But even though that's eight players, you're still blocking six for six because two get lost. These two get, you know, don't get blocked, but they don't make the play. And the other thing is I keep saying combo, but it's not really true. They're not coming off because you do have a lead blocker. Like, for instance, tackle and guard are up right here. And without a back, you know, they're going to pass one off. But because you have a lead back, he's just stepping in here and hitting him. So it's six on six. It's really all about the backside. Here is the safety squeezing through. I'll show you a different angle on that. But because you're blocked right here on the edge by Austin Williams, you get to the edge and now it's a foot race. Who can get there? Um, and it's just aggressive running. State's backs were just phenomenal in this ball game for 149 combined between Woody and uh, Dylan. So uh, here's the offensive perspective. You got a head up nose, you got a four, and you got an inside, and then you know everybody around. So eight guys who can get involved, like we talked about. On the snap, look what's happening. Sharp. And just eating a guy up at nose. Just eating him up right there. You know, and they don't block eight who's coming from, you know, the middle of the formation. They don't block him. They don't have to because he's having a hard time squeezing through. Backside where the run goes, it's just a, a duo right there with a back coming up and hitting. And then you're getting Austin Williams out on the edge. So when one squeezes through, I got to make him miss, right? And don't get caught on the backside and spring it to the edge. That happens. And what you'll see is Zero, who was lined up, you know, back here kind of creeping down. He's now kind of got to get over the top and go try to run him down. He can't get there. So you go out the backside. I'm on the edge. He can't get there. So you make one miss on the edge who's trying to fall off. Eight's kind of trying to run from the backside. He can't get there. You outrun him. You get out there in the way, you know, so the corner can't just fly in there and get contact. He's avoiding a block, and that gets you – on the back end and try to get to the pylon. Because I, you know, to me, it's just a heck of a run. It's not necessarily blocked up cleanly. You are going with six blockers against eight guys flying around the line of scrimmage. One squeezes through right here. And, you know, really, a lot of guys are going to squeeze through and make that play, but 
Dylan's just faster, quicker, a step ahead, makes another one miss on the end. It's a fantastic run right here, just an athletic play by Dylan Johnson. Here it is from a defensive perspective. And again, you talk about the blocks. Duo, he gets blocked on the edge by the back. You get Austin Williams out here on the edge. You know, here, here you're taken care of. So he squeezes through a gap, can't get there in time for the cut. He goes over the top and can't run him down. Dylan's just the, the faster, more aggressive player out here. Little bit of a, you know, not hesitation, but that jab step to hold it in the middle. Now bounce, outrun eight, make 13 miss. Zero is flat, he can't get there, I've outrun him. And now foot race to the pylon. A lot of people felt like he got to that pylon. They showed a replay. That right there looks like touchdown to me. And so I guess they're saying that here, his arms on the ground just a split second before he hits the pylon. And probably the right call, but they mark him down at the one as opposed to the one inch. 